I'm going to zero it out. A plate's sort of not great because I can't see over the lip. Okay, there we go. Whoops. I'm going to zero it out. And I'm going to measure out six ounces. So they're almost, see how much they've reduced now? Look at that. They still got some moisture in it, so I want to cook that off till there's really not much moisture left. But boy, those are a beautiful color. So I'm going to turn up the up the uh, just a bit. These, these are done. There's still some moisture, but that's all right. I think I can handle that. Right? They are beautiful. There's still some moisture in this thing. I'm not going to put my dough into this moisture. So what I am going to do is cut the vent off so you can hear me. I'm going to get a paper towel. And I'm just going to rub the inside of this. A little bit of flour on your counter. About a handful. Take your dough, and I'm not going to throw it up in the air. We're just going to roll this out. Actually, I don't need this yet. In fact, once again, because I, I you know, I think I am so prepared when I do these shows that I have everything I need, but I don't. I have a wonderful pastry scraper, but I don't have it here. Let me get some of that excess. Right, I'm just going to get some of this excess off. I'm just, I'm just making sure nothing else is on fire. Okay. So this dough, like I said, actually, this is a whole. I think this might be a multi-grain, um, but uh, it's a very good dough. And of course, I don't have any of my brushes. What was I thinking? I thought I was so set up. If I have a little bit of flour, I take one of my pastry brushes, paintbrush, and I just brush it off. But. I don't have it. Rosie, do you have it? Rosie doesn't have it. All right. So you see how nice and elastic this is because it's warmed up a little bit. If it was cold, it wouldn't stretch as much. So I'm just rolling out from the center, out to the edges, and I'm going to take my pan, which is still a little hot, and I want to just make sure... I've got these big sides, right? So you have the sides, so you need to make sure you have enough space. In fact, this is a 12-inch pan. And the sides are two, right? So 12 plus four is 16. So that means I need a 16 inch, or more actually, because I like to fold it up a little bit. So I need 16 inches going across. That's 16 right now. Take the dough over the rolling pin. And I'm gonna keep using this, my last remaining pot holder. And then I'm gonna basically take the dough, and I'm gonna roll it up the sides. Now, it's going to start to sink in, so you want to grab it, if you can see what I'm doing here, and then push it into the sides. Smush it around. Need a little bit more. How you doing, Rosie? Rosie's like, I am hungry. All right. I got the olive oil. Now that acts as a little seal, like I said. These goes at the bottom, and I actually think this acts also like a little bit of a seal. I'm not putting all of it on the bottom because I like to save a little bit for the top. So I'm going to put this right here. Cheese is on the bottom. What am I going to do? I'm going to do some sausage. I'm going to use up almost all of this sauce. So I'm going to splat that in. Let's just show you. Our onions, woo, which are hot. I just stuck my hand in there, but oh well. Basil, put some of my basil in there. Let me tilt this up so you can see it. All right. Got mushrooms over here. There's definitely some water in that sucker. Hopefully, it'll all be okay. Don't put the water in there. Now, 
I'm going to do my green peppers. Now I take some of those tomatoes and I just sprinkle the top. And a lot of times in the deep dish pizza in Chicago, you will see um, tomato sauce on the top. I tried that, but it was too wet with this. So I just like to sprinkle these on a little bit on the top. Look how beautiful that is, right? Gives you some great, I'm gonna put a little basil, finish up some basil, maybe a couple of more tomatoes. And I'm gonna do a little bit of black pepper. And the rest of this cheese, a little bit of cheese, but not like the traditional pizza where you have all that cheese on the top. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Now, I'm gonna take these edges and I'm just gonna tuck them in around the side. Just like you would do a little pie. I'm gonna roll them. I'm just roll and we're not stuffing the crust with cheese. Thank you very much. Roll that around, and that is our pizza. So, actually, before I stick this in the oven, we actually had a caller, actually a writer that wrote in, if I could find his information over here. Woo. Who did we have? Who came in? Emilia, Emilia Luciano from Grand Rapids, Michigan, wanted to know where actually the deep dish uh, came from. So, at least for Chicago history, anyway, it's very interesting. First, you should know there's more than 2,000 pizzerias here in Chicago. We definitely love our pizza. But the story is this. There was a Texan named Ike Sewell who created the dish at his bar and grill named Pizzeria Uno, which a lot of you would know nationally, in 1943. Pizza was so popular, he opened another place called Pizzeria Do. I don't know why, but Do, D-U-E. And then in 1955, the restaurant just east of Michigan Avenue began serving deep dish pizza, and that became a place called known as Gino's East. Those of you that have visited Chicago know that. Um, that became very popular with the crowd on the Magnificent Mile in the Gold Coast. And then this I find really interesting. Two of Ike Sewell's original employees, um, Rudy Malnati and his son, Lou, in 1971, Lou and his wife opened up a pizzeria in the suburbs of Lincolnwood, north of Chicago. And now we have Illuminati's Pizza um, all over Chicago, as well as Gino's East, Giordano's, and of course, Pizzeria Uno. So there it is, a brief history. Thank you very much. Who was that guy again? Emilio Luciano, thank you so much for writing in Grand Rapids. Love that town. I love your lake effect snow. This is a really good pizza stone. You can notice it's a little bit thick. Um, some of the ones that are there are the, now you get these thinner pizza stones that are white. They crack all the time. If you can, and I'll have on the website the really good stone. So I'm going to take this beautiful pizza that we made. It goes right on the pizza stone into the oven. And all that heat immediately goes up into the stone and cooks the bottom so that it gets crusty and it isn't soggy. I'm going to put my timer on 20 minutes which is what works for my oven. So put this on pause and when we come back um, well, if you're cooking with me, put it on pause. If not, next time we come back, we're going to pull this out of the oven and we're going to plate it up and you are going to love it. All right, so uh, we put the pizza back in for another five minutes because it was done. So now we've got a total of, I can't even get anywhere. We have a total of 25 minutes in with our pizza and here we go. And I'm going to take this out no matter what because I know the bottom starts to get, this is a durian job. Look at that. All right, that's our pizza. Ooh, put it here. Now, see all the juices and stuff like that? I'm gonna let this pizza rest for a good 10 minutes before I cut into that. So, I'm gonna let this pizza rest and uh, I'm gonna clean up this mess and then we are going to plate up a delicious uh, deep dish pizza. Twenty-five minutes in the oven for this pizza, 450 degrees, and now we're going to cut. So I'm either going to go down with the ship because you guys are going to be like, that guy sucks. But I'm going to cut this. I can see some moisture here from the mushrooms, so I'm not going to take a piece from that yet. I'm going to let that soak in overnight, and it's really good the next day. So I'm going to take my big knife. Oh, that's moist. I think my mushrooms have some more water in that I should have taken out. But we shall see. My friend Paul says it will still be good. All the ingredients going in are good, so I can see. But it's definitely, now, 
in half this one and this one. So that's why I'm getting three pieces out of this. And that's why I could give you a calorie count of 500 calories. I'm just going to grab this over here. Pizza. Okay, not too bad. Hey guys, what do you here. think? Look at the size of that. You tell me where you get a beautiful pizza like that. Now, I like to put hot peppers on. Hot peppers are always good. Uh, again, it's hot peppers speed up your metabolism. Put those on. Now, one thing about anchovies. Sometimes I put um, olives in the pizza because I liked a little bite of the salt. Anchovies are really good too. I'll tell you why I don't always cook with them because I don't like the way they reheat. So if I'm gonna put anchovies on my pizza, I like to sort of add them later, chop them up or have somebody put it on. But reheated anchovies, just not that great. So thank you so much. This was a, quite a dramatic show with the fire and everything, but we survived. So this is my, my version of a Chicago deep dish pizza here on the Unexpected Guest. From Chicago, my name is John Cleese, and enjoy, and remember, be good to yourself because there's no substitute for you. We'll see you again.